Hi everyone, this is Livia Cottell, your host for the Conscious Wealth Builders Online Summit. And I have the honor to be with the amazing Haley Rushing today. Hello, Haley, welcome. Hi, Libby, it's so glad to be here. It's so awesome to have you. Um, I was introduced to you by Raj Sisodia and I was just sharing with you about him and he just loves you to bits and speaks very highly of you. And I went to your website, I saw your TEDx about you speaking about purpose-driven companies and man, you are just a powerhouse. So awesome, oh. thank you for your contribution. Well, thanks for having me. I'll, I'm, I'm happy to tell you all about it. Yes, definitely. So you are the co-founder and... I am the chief purposeologist. And to my knowledge, I, I invented the title. I, I grew up and my background's in cultural anthropology, but at a certain point in my career, I started kind of, instead of just looking at the consumer world and doing ethnographies in that space, I started looking inside companies and doing almost more like corporate ethnography to figure out kind of the, the cultures that exist inside organizations. And then, um, I don't know, purposeology just felt more appropriate for where my life's work had taken me. It is so fitting and so suiting because you're the co-founder of the Purpose Institute. So share yes. with us about the Purpose Institute, what you guys are doing out in the world. And, and actually, it would be cool if you could kind of segue into your journey of how you got into this. Because I always am fascinated sure. with how people get to where they're at in life. Yeah, sure, sure. Well, um, the Purpose Institute, we say our purpose is to help you fulfill yours. Like our entire body of work is focused on helping organizations get crystal clear on what their fundamental purpose is in the world and what are those core values that also shape and define their cultures. Um, and we actually, we started about eight or nine years ago, I think roughly, we spun off of GSCNM, which is uh, one of the top 20 advertising agencies in the country. And basically, I, as, as I mentioned, I used to do a lot of um, consumer strategy work or brand strategy work focusing on consumer insights. And somewhere along the way, it became very apparent to me that the brands that were truly beloved brands in the world, that were high-performing brands, those brands that you like wake up in the morning and you actually want to invite into your life and you would feel kind of off if they weren't there, yes. were, were brands that had um, earned that right because they were actually... Um, from organizations, from companies that were led by leaders who had this sense of purpose beyond making money that drove everything that they did. And so um, when we started looking at great, great brands like Southwest Airlines, like John Deere, BMW, Whole Foods, we, all of them had this common um, sense of purpose and really strong shared values. And so Roy Spence, he's the founder of GSDNM, brilliant, visionary, charismatic person, um, who had attracted all these leaders and these great companies to GSD and He and I wrote a book together called It's Not What You Sell, It's What You Stand For. And in that book, we basically shared the journey of how these great brands emerged from organizations that had great differentiated, compelling sense of purpose at the, at the heart of each of those businesses. And um, when the book came out, we had so much interest from people who said, you know, I don't need advertising, but I do need help with my purpose and values. Wow. So we started the Purpose Institute and um, have just had uh, been blessed to have amazing clients. We work primarily with Fortune 500 companies, but then Austin's an enormously productive entrepreneurial market. So we do a lot of work with entrepreneurs and startups here uh, in our own backyard as well. Amazing. Well, I know a lot of viewers that are watching this are people who desire to create a business or already have one and maybe want to be more purpose driven or really want to take it to that next level. So that's really awesome that you are working with startups and entrepreneurs. Yeah. And because, yeah, it's it's so needed in all areas of business. So how would you? Well, and yeah, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, and certainly the principles are applicable no matter the size of the organization. And yeah. some, it's for me, it's been really gratifying to work with the really large organizations because if you can shift their their view of the impact that they can work make in the world, even just a little bit, yeah. the potential for impact is so huge. So yeah. that's kind of exciting to work with the big companies, but it's also brings its own unique challenges just because there's they're so large and it's so hard to kind of shift people into a purpose-driven mindset of, of doing business, or it can be challenging, versus when you're working with a startup, you know, they can build it uh, from the ground up from day one to be purpose-driven, multi-stakeholder model in mind, conscious leadership, 
um, strong core values. And so uh, it's actually, and as you, especially you look at the millennial generation to do today, sorry, and they're, they're kind of naturally wired to think about business as a force for good in the world, as you talk about. And so anyway, whether you're, whether you're one of the biggest companies in the world or you're just starting up in your garage, these principles uh, can help steer, the, steer you on, a right, on the right path. That's beautiful. And can you just share a little bit about what, what, what does that mean, purposeful? And some of us conscious folks, we understand that. And some people, they may have it conceptually, but maybe they don't really embody it. You know what I mean? So when you say purposeful, like what does the embodiment of purposeful mean to your organization? Yeah. Well, in, in the simplest, simplest way that we talk about it is your purpose is just a definitive statement about the difference you're trying to make in the world. Yeah. Like, why does your company exist beyond making money? And, and you should be able to, to summarize that in a really clear, concise statement. The way that we tend to arrive uh, or help organizations think about their deeper purpose is if you could kind of imagine three circles, and one of them is... What are your strengths? Like, what are those things that you do exceptionally well that you could conceivably be the best in the world at? Uh, what are your passions? What are those things that light you up, that motivate you, that people get excited when they look at that on their to-do list for the day? And then the third circle would be areas of meaningful impact in the world. So if you think about all the problems, the issues in the world that need solving, yeah. Um, how do you harness your strengths and your passions in order to make a meaningful impact in the world? And somewhere in the it, it, in between kind of the intersection of those three circles is where your purpose kind of naturally emerges. And you really, that's where the kind of art, art of this kind of work comes in is when you're looking at, okay, here's what they're actually built to do well. Wow. Here's what their people light up over. And here's how that could actually put um, in the service of a big problem that the world needs solving. So... That's kind of what we say. Purpose is what difference are you trying to make, and that's a little bit of the in a little bit of the structure of how we go about finding it. Yeah, that's so beautiful, and it's really getting people focused in on that because you know, like conscious wealth builders, and you know, it's it's a movement that's happening. So I didn't just make this up, but it really is people, planet, prosperity. And so when we can get really focused on the purpose and not the money the fulfillment that's there it's because it doesn't become a need it becomes like this this like wow this like fulfillment this aliveness this joy this excitement that you get wake up in the morning that you're not just going somewhere to make money you're like gonna do something worthy of your life right yeah exactly exactly i think jim collins had a great line at the end of i think it was built to last but it might have been good to great where he said it's really hard to have a meaningful life without meaningful work and so the idea that you're, and I think that's part of the old paradigm is that people used to go to work to make money. And then on the weekends, you might go to, you know, cultivate your religious practice or be involved in a nonprofit um, in order. And that's where your meaning would, would, would emanate from. And there's just a lot of lot wise people. Jim Stingle is a good friend of ours from um, Procter & Gamble, or formerly the CMO of Procter & Gamble. And he talks about their own journey at P&G came from the recognition that so many people, so many of their great smart people walk into the building each day with just their just their minds lit up but not their hearts and they left and were doing amazing things in their off time, like super passionate people doing great things in the world, like generating all this engagement to make a difference in the world but didn't have an outlet for that in the workplace. Yeah. So the idea of, of intersecting people's, I think, innate desire to do good and to use their talents in the service of something that they believe in and, and creating workplaces, because at the end of the day, that's where we spend 40, 60, 80 hours a week, have to leave our family, have to put other things on hold to be at work. So it just makes sense that you would uh, do everything that you can to figure out how you can make work as meaningful um, and fulfilling for people as possible. That's so, oh gosh, it just lights up my heart when you talk. It does. It's so missing in the world. And there's some crazy statistics about like, what is it, like 90% of people are unfulfilled at work or something astronomical? Or you probably know better than I do the statistics. Well, Gallup um, tracks en employee engagement. And when they look at, they kind of, they've done thousands and I would say looked at thousands of companies, millions of people. And there's uh, about 20% of any given, in the average workforce are people who are extremely engaged in their work. And those are the people that you love. They're lit up, they're on fire for what they do. They go the extra mile. Then there's about 50% of people 
who are just showing up for a paycheck. They walk in the door, they do the bare minimum, they're out at five, that's it. And then there's those people um, that are actively disengaged who actually are counterproductive to your organization. You would actually be better off if you paid them to stay home because they so undermine the um, the productivity of the people around them. They're just the negative, yes. you know, negative kind of soul sucking people in any organization. Yeah. And so basically what um, Gallup found is there's 12 factors that influence engagement. And some of those are like very basic blocking and tackling. Like I have the tools to do my job and I, I feel like my, um, I have a manager who cares about me. I have a best friend at work. There's a number of things that have actually influenced that. But one of which, Q8, is that the work uh, that my organization does feels purposeful and meaningful to me. Yeah. So oftentimes when they're working with organizations where everything else is they're good managers, people know what they're supposed to do, but there's a deficit in the sense of purpose, yeah. then we'll work with those companies to help them try to dial that up. Um, purpose doesn't solve everything. Like if you have a broken company with bad management and under um, people aren't adequately equipped to do their jobs, a noble purpose isn't going to necessarily help that. But if you've got everything else in place and yet your people aren't lit up about what they do, chances are probably good you need to take a closer look at the meaning that people imbue in their work. Yeah, no, I mean, it makes such a huge profound difference. I know, you know, for me, um, in companies where I've worked, where there hasn't really been a strong emphasis on difference making, um, it really is draining. It's a draining yeah. experience. And so that's why I just light up having this conversation. It's like, this is what gives energy. This is what gives meaning to life is purpose. Yeah. And it's more than, it just, is. it's more than just money. Money is so like ordinary to what's possible when you really focus on the purpose. Well, and the thing is, I think a lot of people think that it's kind of an either or situation. You're either profit driven or you're purpose driven. And that's just, that's what I love about people like Raj Sisodio and his work and Jim Collins and their work to, that have actually proven the correlation between purpose and performance. And it's kind of ironic, but those companies that pursue profit myopically actually don't make as much money as the companies that are focused on purpose. So purpose is a, is a well-validated driver of performance. So we're, we're not anti-profit, like we love, yes. we love high performance, we yes. love money, that's a good thing. But um, just like every other, I love John Mackey, founder of Whole Foods, he, he always talks about how there's other professions, if you ask a teacher what their purpose is, they would say, build to educate, or a, you know, a lawyer theoretically is there to promote justice, or uh, an architect is to design environments for people to live, but for some reason, when you ask business, just the generic business person, what's your purpose? It's it's for way too long been kind of reduced to well, our purpose is to make money or maximize profit for shareholders, instead of taking that step to say, actually, my organization's purpose is to make this kind of difference in the life of the people that we touch, and then of course the money will follow. And if we the better we are at fulfilling our purpose the more profitable and high performing an organization will be. Yeah, that's so beautiful. And you know, I shared this with some other experts and so people have probably heard this uh, several times on the summit, but it's just, I wanna reemphasize it that we carry so much of our own baggage into our lives from the past, into our personal lives, our business life and those kinds of things. And when I was a young girl, you know, I grew up in a household where there wasn't always food on the table. There wasn't always money, so I, mm -hmm had a fear and I decided at a young age I'd do whatever it takes to never be broke. And so I lived inside of that domain for yeah. many, many years and it was just very like survival, right? And so yeah. having a deep purpose and a meaning really took me out of that survival mode. Mm. That's and, interesting. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what else it reminds me of just listening to you kind of share that, that personal sense of, I think it reminds me of Rosh Sodio when he's talking about conscious capitalism, uses the metaphor of the caterpillar transforming into the butterfly. Yes, it's like yes. there, there's a time, I think there's a time in your life, personal life and there's a time in the life of an organization when they're just like the little hungry caterpillar. Like they just need to be the, figure out how to survive as a caterpillar and how to be the best little caterpillar that they can be. But there comes a point when, you know, you've reached, that, you've matured as much as you can mature on the survival you know, um, a kind of front, and then it's time to transform into something that's not just 
taking care of yourself, but has the potential to make everything, like become a pollinator and actually change the orientation from what can I consume to what can I give back and how can I um, operate in a way that fills me up as well as nourishes everyone around me. So I love that kind of little transition that I, I, I see organizations go through. I see people kind of go through that journey of what's, how can I take care of myself? And then eventually you get into the goo or the cocoon and figure out how to transform and evolve into something that's more, I don't know, heartening to everyone around you. Yeah, no, that's this comes so, from a bigger place. Yeah, well, that's so beautiful that you say that. And, and in particular, you know, how does one, because can, can you have it all? So can you start from the very beginning being purposeful driven and really get out of that survival mechanism from the beginning and really start like, okay, I'm going to have it be purpose driven. There will be value to receive a profit. And um, so you don't even have to go through that whole process. <laughs> yeah, well, I think that's the thing. I think we see more and more businesses and entrepreneurs who from the get go understand this connection between this kind of false notion that you have to pursue profit for a certain time in your life in order to be sustainable. And then once you've achieved a certain level of success, then you can start focusing on giving back and thinking about legacy. A lot of times it's that sense of legacy that prompts leaders to actually start thinking and ponder their purpose. But you certainly, to your point, Livia, you actually, you're, you're absolutely right. I think the sooner people get it, the sooner they can get on down the road of becoming a, a great organization that people love to work for, that customers love to root for, and that um, shareholders actually enjoy profiting from. So it's not, it is a false trade-off to say, well, should I pursue purpose or should I pursue profit? Yeah. It's like, we're, we love profitable companies. It's yes. just, let's, let's, let's get clear on what is at the heart of their profit. It's, it's having a purpose and how do you actually make a meaningful difference or solve a real problem. I mean, we just got back from the Conscious Capitalism CEO Summit last week and the stories Yay of how these CEOs were using their businesses to solve massive problems and it was generating whole new business, you know, revenue streams for them, I love it. whole new breakthrough levels of loyalty from their customer bases, all in direct proportion to the good that they were doing. It was, it was, I, love it. I love coming off of that conference because it's so inspiring to hear the leaders on the front lines who are actually using yeah. their businesses to really make a positive difference in the world. Oh, and I just, I love sharing that information with people because yeah, it is important to be profitable and have money. And I just, it's kind of like, I just love how the universe works, right? It's like you do good <laughs> and you get rewarded because there's been this false lie um, that if you're spiritual or, you know, you bring these kinds of principles into business, you know, there, there's like a breakdown around charging money, you know, around health and healing and more of what people call the spiritual realms of businesses, right? Yeah. And so it's like, well, you shouldn't be charging for that. And, you know, that's bad and that's wrong. And, you know, like all of these lies, right? And it's like, no, profit's good. You know, it helps. It is. Yeah, it helps the economy. It helps, you know, our communities and all of that. So my message and what you're pointing to, and I love that, is that you can have it all. You can have a profitable business that's making a difference in the world, solving global issues or issues in your community or issues in family units. <laughs> yeah, it's all absolutely. interconnected. Well, and the thing, the reason why purpose works so well is because you, it becomes the driver for everything going on inside that organization. It's like this wonderful lens by which you can look at all of the different options that leaders face every single day and say, and they have to make decisions about what are we going to invest our time and our energy and our resources into? What are we going to innovate in the service of? How are we going to get the talent in the workforce um, that we need to thrive? And without having a purpose at the center, driving all that and helping you d determine what you're going to pursue, helping drive innovation, helping attract the best help. I don't know how you, I, I don't know how you lead. It's funny having worked with companies for so long that were purpose driven and by design, the people that call the Purpose Institute have a appetite and a yearning to look at things through that lens or at least make the purpose that they've, that's been implicitly driving them, make it more explicit. Um, it's, it's hard to think about like how you would what's your anchor or your North star that you're going to be navigating by? Like, so I, it, yeah, I, I, and that's a long way of saying you can definitely have it all, but it's, yeah. 
it's all of those things accrue from having a purpose. You know, smart strategy, brilliant innovation, great people, great culture all arise when you have a sense of what it is we're all doing here. What are we what are we all banded together trying to do in the world? And so um, yeah, I don't know how I don't know how you I don't know how you have it all if you don't have the purpose kind of leading the leading the charge. Yeah, no, I definitely agree with you. And I loved what you said about the strategy piece, because I think that's a lot of times, you know, um, it's about, you know, people like they, they want it to be grounded and not woo woo, right? Because sometimes like getting extremely yeah. over like exuberant about making a difference and whatever. I notice with a lot of businessmen, when I talk about those things, they're kind of like, oh, she's woo woo, you know? So it's like bringing that groundedness to it and bringing the strategy yeah. is very important. Is that something that you guys do at the Purpose Institute? Do you create like strategies around businesses or do you mostly Oh, absolutely. Just... Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the first, the first usual engagements are the Purpose and Values Discovery work where we'll spend three to six months really getting inside of an, of an organization and, and, and helping the, the purpose kind of naturally er, um, emerge from extensive interviews and ethnographies we do inside the company as well as with each one of the stakeholders that they serve. We always conclude the purpose work by doing what we call the reality check, which is to say, if this is your aspiration, let's do a reality check on how that's being experienced by the people you're supposedly trying to help or impact. And so what we might find uh, is that the customer or stakeholder says, you know what, you're actually much more noble than you even think you were. Let me tell you about the difference you've made in my life. And and that can be a rewarding thing, but we can also find out where the gaps are. Like they can also say, well, that's nice that that's their aspiration, but I don't see it here, here, and here. Or for that to be true, I would need to experience X, Y, and Z. And so that X, Y, and Z becomes our marching orders for how do we activate the purpose going forward in more meaningful ways. It wouldn't be a viable purpose if they weren't already living it to a certain extent, yeah. but there's always work to be done. I, that's one of the things I love about Whole Foods has a declaration of interdependence, and it closes by saying, you know, let us not be discouraged between when we see a reality that is out of alignment with our greatest aspirations. That just means we've got work to do and that we wake up every day trying to essentially become a better us. So, mm, um, that so that's a, that's kind of a long answer for sometimes it's strategy. It might be that, okay, the internal employees, they love the purpose, but they're not seeing what action is being taken by the company to fulfill that purpose in a meaningful way. It might be an employee engagement effort. Um, it might be a product innovation. It might be store experience innovation, something like that, that, helps them manifest the purpose more fully in in wherever there seems to be a gap. Yeah, wow, that's amazing. Well, thank you so much for the work that you're doing. And how does one contact you? Can they just email you if they desire to work with your organization? Sure, sure. I mean, the, we have a website, um, the thepurposeinstitute.com. Okay. And make sure you put the in there because yes. there's a, there is another Purpose Institute, but it's a Bible college in the Midwest. So the the is important. Um, although I'm sure that's a very purposeful organization too. And, uh, or you can just reach me at Haley at thepurposeinstitute.com. Awesome. Well, good. Yeah, yeah. So viewers, I really hope that, you know, if you're looking to bring more purpose into your business, that you reach out to Haley because you guys are really just, you're doing the work and you're doing it very well. So. Oh, thank you. Thank you. We've been blessed to just have amazing, I mean, Roy and I talk about just the, the amazing mentors that we've had in our lives over the last 20 years working with Herb, uh, Herb um, Kelleher and Colleen Barrett at Southwest Airlines and John Mackey at Whole Foods and just Norm Brinker from Brinker Restaurants, just amazing leaders who have essentially taught us everything that we know about what it really means to lead from a place of purpose and create cultures that are based on values and love, not fear and intimidation, you know, that kind of thing. And so it's fun to be able to pay it forward and share that, share the lessons that we've learned uh, with new clients and um, uh, new organizations going forward. No, it's so beautiful. And, you know, it's just, it brings so much peace to my heart knowing that there's people like you in the world. And that's why I created this community. And really it's to reassure myself <laughs> that this world is like heading in a positive direction. I have to like surround myself with, with people of like mind because um, it's an interesting world out there. And I know that because of the yeah. internet and because of the YouTube, 
there's more documentaries that are coming around out around the corruption of these corporations and there's a lot of people who are angry like the march against Monsanto and like all of these things mm. and so my whole thing is is like just like Mother Teresa let's not be against something let's be proactive right not reactive but there's right. a lot of anger and I think that once we can get really harnessed in our purpose and the purpose in our work and what we're out to fulfill we're bringing that more proactive beingness to it and so that's just an acknowledgement to your work and thank you so much for that because it's a huge contribution yeah well it's been exciting to see that when we started doing this work about eight to ten years ago there were like this small little tribe of really idealistic companies that you can imagine who, who would be in that tribe and today it's just it, it's amazing to see the momentum for purpose-driven businesses and that it's not just purpose washing it's 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 deeply ingrained in the leadership consciousness of the businesses that we're seeing today in ever greater numbers so it's it's been great to see the momentum kind of kind of uh, get going around the movement and really and really take off in a in a significant way that's beautiful so where do you see yourself in the next you know five years ten years I mean where it's what's where's the purpose Institute going what are you guys up to well you know it's funny um, for the first, I would say the first six or, six or seven years of our work, we were doing so much discovery work, helping companies actually kind of get really clear on their purpose and values. And now so much more of our work is on the activation side because companies have yes. their purpose, but they need help bringing it to life in meaningful ways. And yes. so the next, I see the next era of the Purpose Institute is we're developing really interesting partnerships with amazing consulting firms, employee training firms, product design firms, yeah. so that we can really help our clients take their purpose, take their purpose to the next level in a sense. So yeah. um, uh, that's why I like, I love what you're doing kind of yeah. that when you talk about the tribe of people that are coming from the same place, it's amazing yeah. how, how many um, different ventures there are in the world in this space. And so I think the more we can work together to kind of come at clients, businesses, um, and, and how can we help them really manifest their purpose and, and their values in meaningful ways? I think that's going to be an exciting new horizon, I think. Absolutely. I'm all about collaboration and cooperation. And Bernie Dorman, he's the founder of CEO Space. He's in this summit, and that's his whole movement is around yeah. the collaboration and the cooperation and Raj and you and all of us. And that's what I love so much. The competition is, you know, he says it's a virus. It's a virus of the mind. Yeah. And it's, it, that's that draining feeling, you know, that's what really doesn't allow you to feel alive. And that's what I'm all about is people experiencing aliveness in all areas of their life, including their work. So. Well, that's evident. You yeah. can, you can you just exude it from every port. <laughs> it's fabulous. Thank you. You too. Well, thank you so much for being here. And again, viewers, um, go ahead and just email we'll put the link below for the purpose institute so go ahead and click the link below and also feel free to email haley i'll put her email below as well if you're interested in getting um, coaching consulting in your organization and really bringing it to a much deeper level of purpose so thanks again haley have a wonderful yes. day everybody thanks thanks for having me i appreciate it you got it